What makes rich countries rich? Today, we're going to talk about why most people have the wrong answer to that question. Most people would say that a country becomes rich if it has natural resources, like oil or minerals or farmland. But if that were true, Japan would actually be a very poor country, and many African countries would be incredibly rich. So if resources don't make a country rich, what does? I'll tell you two stories. This is a bridge and aqueduct in southern France. It was built by the Romans about 2,000 years ago. To build it, they had only the most basic techniques. Lots of stone and mortar, some basic levers and pulleys, and lots of workers. And it's still standing after 2,000 years. This is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. It was built in 1940 in Washington State, using all the most sophisticated tools and techniques possible. They had high-grade steel, they had reinforced concrete and cranes, and it still fell down less than a year after it was built. So clearly, resources don't explain the success or failure of these two different bridges. What does? Incentives. The Romans would always test their bridges before they used them. They would load up this huge ox cart full of heavy stones and drive it across the bridge. And if the bridge didn't fall down under that heavy load, then it was safe to use. And here's the thing. The Romans made the guy who designed the bridge drive that first cart across it. So he had a very personal incentive in building the strongest bridge possible. And that's why some Roman bridges are still standing after 2,000 years, and some of our modern bridges fall down. Our second story takes place on the Korean Peninsula, which is split between North Korea and South Korea. Here is a satellite picture taken at night. You can see South Korea all lit up like neighboring China. It's because it's a thriving, developed economy. And you can also see North Korea, which has a similar population, but is catastrophically underdeveloped. What explains the difference? Well, these two countries have the same geography, the same climate, and the same resources, so that can't be it. Up until 1945, North and South Korea were the same country, so they share the same history, the same language, the same religion, the same culture, so that can't be it. The difference is that South Korea has a market-based economy, and it's been a democracy since the 1970s. North Korea, on the other hand, is one of the world's last remaining communist dictatorships. Again, the difference is incentives. A market democracy sets up incentives for innovation and investment that aren't there in a communist dictatorship. And incentives explain why resource-poor Japan is actually very wealthy, while many African countries are very poor. Japan is democratic, has the rule of law, and protects property rights, and all of those institutions create incentives for economic growth. Whereas, for a variety of historical reasons, many developing countries don't have those institutions, which means their citizens have less incentive to invest and innovate. The effect of incentives is so strong that it can be seen from space. Who is that econ guy? I'm Patrick Walsh. I'm an associate professor of economics at St. Michael's College near Burlington, Vermont. 